Music. I'm here at NAMM 2013 with Point Blank and I'm going to take you to some of the new products we have this year. So, the controller market is constantly changing. You know, there's a lot of controllers out on the market now that are from different facilities for making music. Now, one of the things that we come up with, with the new air controllers, this is the M Audio Air 25, and this is really geared up into the whole electronic dance music, which as we know is now absolutely massive worldwide. So, you know, as you can see, it, it doesn't offer you the normal facilities of a 25 wood. You've got, this, you've got the full size 16 MPC packs now, integrated inside the controller. Um, it gives you a much more bigger visual layout from the LCD screen. You've got your transport control here, but it's in such a nice spot so you can physically work the track hard whilst you're doing your bass lines. You can just flick and move and record. You've got your real-time control pots here on the left-hand side, and we've got an absolutely awesome pitch bend, which you can really start modeling the notes when you're making bass lines. So it's very integrated for the, for the dance producer, someone who's not so much a technical keyboard player that wants to work riffs, arpeggiation, you know, all those kind of things. So, the, um, as you can see as well, on the back, we are running USB powered, MIDI in, MIDI out, if you want to use it with some external modules. So it's literally plug and play. And, and it also comes with uh, Pro Tools Express as well, so straight out of the box. And that will give you the ability to run you know, audio count, virtual instruments, all inside the whole controller when you rig it up to your Mac or PC. If you do want to create your beats, we've got all the pads, we've got the classic MPC roll, no repeat. So it's, you know, it's an absolutely fantastic product. The most amazing thing about the MPC Studio against all the competition on the market is the size. You know, this thing is less than one inch thick and you can physically take it wherever you want. It's USB bus powered, one cable, straight into your, your Mac or PC and you're away. Um, but what's also happened this, over the past few days, we've done a, a major update on the MPC software up to 1.3, which brings absolute stability to our software. And it brings some amazing features as well. So you can, run, you can now run multiple plugins per track. It will now, it won't duplicate the plugins anymore. So every time you would open up a new, a new expansion plugin, it would duplicate it onto the next track. And now it doesn't do that. It will physically take one instance of the plugin and you can apply it across multiple tracks now to keep your processing power down. Uh, we've changed the GUI on the top left here now. You see some new icons that take you through the editing facilities. Um, also, if I change this track to a plugin track, I can now choose the type of plugin I want from a drop down menu. So I'm just going to open up the bank. And what that will do for me now, when I go to my program edit, I now have a new GUI here. So I have the control layout of the plugin all customized down into my window. So I can, it won't ever stop my workflow, which is fantastic. Um, we've added some new features as well to the vintage mode for a lot of the hip hop guys out on the market. Um, I'll show you. We have a we have a feature on the on the Renaissance called um, it, it will emulate the MP3000 uh, MP3, SP1200. But on the original 1200, they had they had a ring mode that when you used to take half the take one of the jack cables out, leave it uh, linked, kind of latched in halfway, you'll get like a ringing pulse sound on your bass lines. And now we've emulated that into the um, into the Renaissance, which is a great feature. Um, also, on the track mixer, it now will only visually show you the tracks that you're using. So, if you're running six tracks, you'll see six tracks. Originally, you'd see all 128, which made it a little bit difficult when mixing. Um, there's also some new file management systems. It will, if you're going to drag in any kind of library from the Renaissance, it will do that automatically for you and drop it into all the pads and create the program all automatically, which is fantastic, very, very fast. So if I, if I load up a program here, I go into my content, here I go to my content, MPC content, drums, and I can go, okay, I've got to load that, press replace, 
going to load up my whole drum kit, but what I can also do is load the whole library. So I can say, okay, I'm going to take this drum kit program and bang, it's now loaded in every single program for me. Putting it onto the pads so I can then just continue making my beat. Very fast process. And that's kind of it where we are with the MPC studio. Hello everybody, my name is Amir. I'm the senior product manager. Actually, I manage the product management at Waves Audio. And we're here at the NAMM show, uh, 2013, uh, with the good people from uh, Point Blank, which we have a long-standing relationship with. And we're gonna show you some of the new stuff that uh, Waves is showing here at NAMM now. Uh, if you look at my shirt here, there's like this logo over here. That's DigiGrid. We have uh, a new relationship with people from Digico. If you look over here, you see all these big live consoles. Uh, for three years now, we've been running plugins on live consoles. You know, uh, people are now starting to use plugins in live concerts, front of house uh, engineers, and they're using a dedicated system that Waves made called the SoundGrid. And now with DigiGrid, uh, actually, Digico decided to make studio hardware that will use SoundGrid, Waves SoundGrid technologies for studio cats and not only for live uh, front of house people and stuff like that. Uh, that means that you can have SoundGrid. SoundGrid is a processing and networking solution by Waves. Uh, it includes uh, you know, your basic IOs and also DSP processing uh, dedicated power through DSP servers that use Intel CPU chips to do the processing dedicated power. So you offload it from the CPU of your workstation. And uh, what we're showing here is a bunch of new hardware that lets you use this technology in the studio. Uh, we have uh, some different ones. We have uh, this one we see here, the DLS and the DLI over here are bridges to Pro Tools to get Pro Tools into SoundGrid. And these here are like standard IOs, but you see the ones that are 2U also and, and are end with an S are also a server. They will also do your DSP horsepower for all the real time no latency or virtually almost no latency. It's, the latency is about 0.8 milliseconds. It's lower than one millisecond. And you can have 128 channels on a regular Ethernet network. So you can use a regular Ethernet switch to pub in all of these uh, different devices. And uh, what we're showing here is, uh, for example, how we can uh, play a Pro Tools session. Uh, right now we're showing an application that's also brand new. This is the Waves eMotion Mixer. Look at the overview, we can look at all channels. So this, this is a live version of the eMotion Mixer. Uh, you see 64 channels that can be either mono or stereo. Right now we're driving channels from Pro Tools. And over here on the laptop, connected with a regular CAT cable, an Ethernet cable, I can press play and all of a sudden we have more channels driven into SoundGrid and into this Emotion Mixer from uh, a native workstation. So we're really excited about that. Also at NAMM here we have some new uh, plugins. The IR Live plugin is our first convolution reverb for live users, for people that are doing front of house and monitor mixing. Uh, this uh, will run on SoundGrid uh, servers uh, with uh, multi-rack applications for people who are using like Digico consoles or Yamaha or Allen and Heath. And now with DigiGrid, there's also this new piece of hardware here that's called the MGB or the MGO. These drive MADI streams, digital MADI streams into SoundGrid. So you can get with one handheld uh, hardware device, you can get 128 streams of uh, audio in and out of SoundGrid. That's like 256 streams of audio to your laptop using a single uh, Cat 5E or Cat 6 cable, regular Ethernet connections, and uh, a whole bunch of power horsepower to do the processing on the servers. Um, so. A couple of more new plugins. We have this one. We also have a new plugin called the GEQ. It's a classic graphic equalizer with an integrated analyzer. Comes in the classic kind of uh, configuration, and you can uh, you can also jack up the modern version of the GEQ. 
in the modern version, what you'll see is that rather than uh, bands coming together, they always keep the one flat top. The, the peak gain is what you set. It doesn't accumulate from the filters on the side. It always builds up to one plane. Um, some more new stuff. There's. Uh, I'm really excited about these uh, plugins that bring back the glory of Abbey Road's EMI's red desks, the ones that were used by the Beatles in the 60s, not just the Beatles, but you know, everybody who was recording in those days. These are actually, you know, two based, uh, well, the preamps are all V72s or Red 47s uh, preamps, which are uh, the preamps that EMI used to make. Uh, so we have the sound, modeling the sound of the preamps and of both the classic and pop EQ that used to be fitted like a plug-in with a big box of hardware into these consoles. We have both types, pop or classic and you know, nice 60s sounding high filters, low filters. You'll have to take the demo and hear them for yourselves because we're at NAMM and you can't hear anything over here. And I think that's uh, my uh, little showcase for you guys. Thank you for being with us. Oh. My name's Adrian, I'm uh, NAMM 2013 on Folks Right brand new Scarlett 18i20 interface, which is the USB version of our Sapphire Pro 40 interface. So it's got all the same I.O. It's got Focusrite mic preamps, it's actually got eight of them. You've got two on the front, and then you've got another six on the back there. But your 10 outputs, you've also got optical uh, connections for ADAP. You've also got a word clock output as well, which you don't have on the Pro 40. USB, it's got MIDI, it's got SB diff as well. So it's actually kind of the hub of your studio, especially when you think you've actually got two headphone outputs as well, um, plus monitor control with dim and mute controls as well. So this thing really is the hub of your studio. It's got the awesome new ID as well, the lovely anodized metal, lovely front panel as well. Um, really, really nice interface. Comes ships, ships with um, Scarlett Mix Control software as well, so you can control the internal routing of the unit direct from the computer as well. We've got the brand new Novation launch key. Uh, this is the 49 key version, but we also do a 61 and a 25. Um, so, it's a MIDI controller, but um, it also has a launch pad built into it as well. We've got it here with our new apps. So this is the launch key app, which we released in November. It's actually free to download, so just go and, go and get it and just use it. Um, as an app. We've also got the Launch Pad app, which I can control either straight from here or I can actually use the controller for it as well. So I'm going to use the controller. So I mentioned we've got these uh, Launch Pads here as well. So um, we're using a bit of software, well, a bit of hardware control built into this as well called In Control, which allows me to instantly control any music application like Cubase, Nuendo, Logic. Uh, Ableton. So I've got my launch pads here. These are actually velocity sensitive trigger pads as well. So if I'm playing in drum parts, they're actually really nice for that as well. So I can just launch uh, clips straight from the uh, launch pad app. Stop them, start them. I've also got volume control, which I can do direct on the keyboard. I've got effects. Which are really nice too. And then I don't actually need to leave the keyboard to switch back over to my launch key app. And so you can hear the launch pad still working in the background. So I can actually use both of these together. I can actually play the keyboard, use the launch pad all at the same time. And then if I want to use the in control part for the launch key, to switch it off. And I can load up presets, I can let the control node fly around the, sc around the screen, control the cuts off and the ADSR stuff as well. So really nice integration with the launch, uh, the launch key, the launch key software and also the launch pad software as well, just from straight from the people. Hi, I'm Oscar and uh, I'm going to demonstrate the OP-1000 
made by us, Teenage Engineering. So it's basically a synthesizer, a drum machine, and a sampler, and a tape recorder, and a mixer. While you're in synth mode, you got eight different reset buttons here that you can access. And the same thing while you're in uh, drum mode, you got eight different uh, reset buttons. You also have four different sequencers that you can use. Uh, first one is the endless sequencer, where you basically just uh, punch in notes for how many long time you want to, and then you. you know, yeah, okay, that's a lot of swing time. It's got uh, an eighth triplet, so that's why it's swinging. Uh, and then you got a traditional pattern sequencer that basically most most people who's ever made music will uh, recognize this. It's based on a grid where you can just like uh, punch in note as you go. So. so it's really simple to use. And uh, we got different kits, so you can basically load your own samples. You can also sample the FM radio and make your own kits from, from uh, your own samples, but uh, the, the reception in here is not fairly good. But it's super easy to sample something. You just go in here, you type in the, the frequency that you want. So it's super fast and easy. And while you're in your the sample that you have, you can just like gain it really quick, like that, and get really loud. And you can also just edit your uh, the slice that you have super fast. So um, what else is there? Yeah, we, we have a tape recorder. And this is a four-track classic uh, digital version of an analog tape recorder. So uh, let's see what sequence did we make here. We'll just select the kit and go in. Alright, so if you want to put that on tape, all we have to do is go to the tape recorder. Um, you have your punch in and out buttons here and a loop. So if we want to do a two-bar loop, like we did just now, I just punch in here and go two bars, punch out, and then we have our loop. So, now I'm recording on the track one. Then I can keep that going. And let's say I want to find something, you know, a bass track for that. Like, For instance, you just go to uh, go to the sample here, so we can turn it off a new sound. You choose here, sample, and then you go there. And basically, you just push that and you speak into the microphone here. And then you, we have a bunch of effect buttons as well. So if we're in. Uh, Yeah, that's it. 
uh, how much does this cost? Uh, this retails at in dollars eight forty nine and the euros seven ninety nine. Okay, and it's kind of can you um, can you kind of export the the audio? To, you know, can you feed it into Logic or Ableton pretty easily? Yeah, I mean with the with the Ableton Live, you know, we got um, full integration from Transport to Audio, so you, you can basically get your ta tape on here. And it works as a MIDI controller, you have MIDI out through the USB. Yeah. Right. Sounds like a really good uh, tool for sort of for writing, for just sort of working on if you're not in the studio, if you're out and about. Yeah, I mean, this is used widely from live performances to studio work and to, you know, idea sketching and making. So, you know, the portability fact makes yeah. it really handy when traveling. Right. It sounds like, it's like the old school when you did a, you used to record on a four track, yeah, exactly. get your ideas yeah. down and commit them to, uh, yeah. to tape like the old days. Yeah, exactly, and, and sort of the whole philosophy behind the design of it is to keep it really, really simple. You know, it's everything is color coded, so if you see something on the screen that's orange, you know that if I turn the, the orange knob, that parameter is the one that I'm going to. Uh, it's, it's super easy to use, it's super fast to, to, to start making music on. Great, great piece of kit, we like it. Hi, I'm TJ, uh, I'm with Isotope, we're at NAMM 2013. Uh, right here I have Stutter Edit, it's a live chopping up and glitching plugin, where in real time I can play all my glitches and stutters. Uh, right now I have a dubstep track, and I'll play a little bit so you can hear what's going on. By using the MIDI keyboard, I can do really cool stutters and effects. I can chop up the beat. Each keyboard key has a different preset, kind of snapshot of what's going on in Stutter Edit. So I can get a customized rig of effects and different performance things. I can really kind of play all these glitches live in real time. And it's a lot of fun to do uh, to work with in the studio if you're working on drums or vocals, something get some cool variations or glitches in your audio. But also, if you're working as a live performer, if you're in Ableton Live or something, or if you're a uh, vocalist and you can uh, send your audio in and then glitch it out in real time, and it's a lot of fun to play around with. It's a 10 day free trial on our website if you want to check it out, iSkill.com. Uh, just go to Stutter Edit in the product side and it's a little try button. You can download it free for 10 days, play around with it, have fun with it, uh, you can bounce stuff out and kind of test it out for yourself. I'm Jim with Moog Music and uh, today I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about the Moog Sub Fatty Synthesizer. This is the newest analog synthesizer from Moog Music. We're debuting it at NAMM 2013 this year. Uh, and what we have here, this is a uh, part of our Fatty family of synthesizers. So users that are familiar with the Little Fatty and the Slim Fatty will see some, some uh, functions on this instrument that uh, they're very used to, but at the same time we've kind of went back to the drawing board and completely redesigned uh, certain functions to make this its own unique instrument. The first thing you'll notice is that we have uh, used a one knob per function control panel. Every, every facet of the sound that you can control is represented with a knob that you can immediately reach out, touch, grab, and, and control. Uh, you'll also notice in the interface here, there's no LCD screen, there's no menu tree. Uh, everything is, is a button or a knob right on the front panel. The way that you can access presets, over here on the left hand side we have four banks of four presets each, giving you a total of 16. So you can just go through and choose whatever sound you want in a live situation, recall those analog sounds very quickly. Uh, on the inside of the machine, we went back to the drawing board on the oscillators as well. Uh, the design for these oscillators and this synthesizer uh, is the most robust, most clear, high definition oscillator that Moog has created yet. Um, these have a, amazing amounts of high frequency harmonic content that, you know, when you're creating electronic tracks, when you're creating dance tracks, that high frequency harmonic content is what really grabs a hold of the listener. And if you're using filters, if you're using other things, those like to grab a hold of that high frequency content. So the more you have, 
the, the more apparent those effects are going to be in your sound. Um, in addition to the redesign of the oscillator circuit, we've also uh, added in a really cool drive feature in our filter circuit. We're calling it multi-drive, and it's a two-stage process. The first stage is going to be pre-filter overload, and that happens in the mixer section. On this instrument, when your mixer is set to 12 o'clock noon on the oscillators, they're at full volume. Everything that you go past 12 o'clock noon is going to introduce pre-filter overload in the analog filter. And uh, I'll let you hear a little bit of that. This is the sound of just the synthesizer. No overload, no post-drive. just pre-filter overload. Now I'm going to go in on the back end and I'm going to introduce uh, post-filter, FET drive, and OTA distortion. Uh, the first half of the travel on this knob is going to be asymmetrical clipping, which is going to be a very warm tube-like overdrive. And then the back end of the travel is going to introduce symmetrical clipping and distortion. And that's really just going to make this instrument scream. This is where we're getting into that high frequency harmonic content. Uh, as I sweep the filter on this sound, you're going to hear it grab a hold of every one of those harmonics as I go through. I'm just going to use the filter and build a really fat, meaty kick. First thing I do is get the self-oscillating going. Point Blank Online, you've got two methods of interaction with your tutor. Firstly, you've got the weekly online masterclass, which is in real time. And then also we've got feedback on your assignments, and that's known as DVR. So the online masterclass is a one hour session you get with your tutor every week. You can ask questions about the lesson content and get instant feedback and also demonstrations on the fly from their computer desktop with our streaming technology. DVR stands for Direct Video Response, and the concept is really simple. You upload your Ableton Logic or Cubase project file to your tutor, he downloads it, and then pushes record on the screen capturing software, and evaluates your work, so basically giving you one-to-one -one feedback. You see all of the mouse movements and any parameter changes made by your tutor. It's kind of like sitting in the studio over their shoulder watching what they're doing whilst they work. We have found the DVR process has truly revolutionized the way that we teach it online and the results speak for themselves. Book your place on the course now by visiting pointblankonline.net.